Kia ora tato, everyone. Uh, my name is Liz McGrath and I'm the Digital Portfolio Manager here at EMA. Welcome to today's uh, webcam, um, sorry, to our live webinar um, on anchoring on e-commerce, a practical starter's guide on your virtual shop window. Um, we're very um, honoured to be joined today by um, two fantastic gentlemen, um, and we'll shortly be joined by the first of these, Julian Bartram. Julian's the local community manager for Shopify, and he'll be discussing um, orientating to the capabilities that Shopify has and how that will enhance your e-commerce um, customer experience and how to actually drive engagement and loyalty with those online customers. So we're very excited about that. Once Julian's finished his presentation, we'll then be moving to a live Q&A session. And here we'll be joined by the, the second um, gentleman this morning, and that's Travis O'Keefe. Travis is the CEO of Te Whare Huka Huka and Nuku, and this will be your chance to ask him all things online trading related. He truly is an expert, and I'll um, introduce Travis um, shortly. When we come to that Q&A session or at any time throughout the webinar, if you would like to submit questions to slido.com, um, you'll see there on the screen that the event code for today is um, hashtag e-commerce, or one word. Um, if you put your questions on there, um, or even just have that open and go and visit, you can vote the questions that you um, would also like to see answered uh, by ticking the little um, thumbs up symbol on the corner of each question. Um, and then we'll be able to answer the most popular ones for you in the time that we have both Travis and Julian answering those questions. Um, this webinar series has been brought to you today um, by the EMA. And the point of them is to help you manage your business and your staff uh, during these turbulent and disruptive times of, of COVID-19. And um, today, the first day of level two, fantastic, um, which is great. Um, so this uh, webinar is being recorded and it will be available on our dedicated COVID-19 website. You can see the address there, covid19.ema.co.nz. Um, so, this uh, should be live um, by tomorrow afternoon. Um, the recording will be live there. Um, so please do go and have a look, um, both to recapture any information from today, but also the other webinars that have run in this series. So without any further ado, let me introduce you to um, Julian Bartram the local community manager from Shopify. So Julian's, Julian has been in this uh, role for um, just over a year. He has a deep love and a passion um, for all things retail. He's worked on all sides of it, from working, um, selling menswear at Farmers and Lambton Key in the 90s, um, to working with buyers, and in some of the most large um, format retail chains that we have here in New Zealand. Julian also runs his own um, successful uh, retail enterprise, um, Body FX, and in fact, that won the Retail New Zealand People's Choice Award in 2014. Julian really does practice what he preaches, and um, he's been using Shopify for his own um, retail business since 2011. And he, you couldn't get a better person who really understands the juggling act of being a small business owner um, but utilising Shopify to get um, the biggest benefits of which um, getting online quick. So without any further ado, Julian, if you'd like to um, enlighten us with um, some of your uh, information. Thank you. Kia ora, Liz. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for that amazing introduction. I really appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, just by basically just going to get uh, started into uh, this presentation. Uh, and first, I'm just going to share my screen. So thanks, Liz, again, and thank you to the EMA for having me. Uh, just a little bit more about me. I'm the New Zealand Community Manager uh, at Shopify, 
And what does that mean? I'm basically, I look after education for our merchants in New Zealand with a lean towards growth and business strategy. Uh, as Liz mentioned, I've been using Shopify for my own uh, retail and manufacturing business, BodyFX, since 2011. But I've been involved in family business since 1985. No, I'm not a good looking 65 year old, but my old man had me sweeping factory floors as soon as I was tall as the broom. So family run businesses and being an entrepreneur is in my veins. Before we jump in, I wanted to give a quick background on what Shopify is so you can see exactly uh, what fence I'm sitting on. Shopify is an e-commerce platform, or actually a commerce platform, designed for small and medium-sized businesses. Shopify allows you to design, set up, and manage your stores across multiple sales channels, including a website, brick and mortar locations, social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram, uh, marketplaces like TradeMe. With all this said, you can set up an online presence on Shopify in a few short hours, there's uh, no HTML or coding knowledge required. Shopify is cloud-based, which means it's hosted on the internet and not on a local server or a personal computer. And we have over 1 million active businesses on our platform, including lots of brands you'll know in New Zealand, like uh, Walker and Hall, where the diamonds shine, or Allbirds or Ecoya. So for our time together today, I've broken this up into three sections. Firstly, the new normal, or anything but. Second, an, a high-level look at e-commerce and the must-haves. And then thirdly, a specific approach and some tactics to deploy immediately, including my top five. So, the new normal. First of all, I think it's important to acknowledge that this new normal is not normal at all. There is no playbook for this. This is all new. Every company on the planet is navigating their way through this. As business owners, there is no silver bullet, unfortunately, so don't beat yourself up over it. If COVID-19 has taught us anything, it's that it's the resiliency of small businesses and people's willingness to adapt that gets us through the other side of any adversity. Everything we learn, share, advise on has to be approached with in that spirit and we have to recognize that some stuff we try will land and some won't but it's important we try regardless so here's what we do know happy level two new zealand is reopening for business what does that mean for you well we need to continue to plan for a lockdown world traditional offline channels are no longer enough your customers expect options from you going forward Ensure any new plans allow you to pivot quickly. You've got to stay nimble. It's not all doom and glue though. As always with adversity, there is opportunity. So let's talk about that for a second. Prior to COVID, research showed that only half of Kiwi retailers had their own website, let alone selling. But boy, Kiwis were already buying online. 2.5 million New Zealanders shop online. And that's from based off uh, from a CMI fused in uh, 2017 statistics. And also 1.7 million New Zealand online shoppers say the ability to shop outside of business hours is an important or very important to them. Our data now shows even more entrepreneurs and customers are going online. Over the month of April, new online store creation, uh, creations on Shopify were up 150% compared to the previous month. Much of this is likely due to brick and mortar businesses moving online and online store creations. Additionally, in April, the number of consumers who bought from a New Zealand Shopify merchant for the first time increased 100% month over month. So what does that mean for you? Traditional brick and mortar businesses are bringing their customers online with them, and those customers are responding positively. People who have never bought online are doing so, and they're staying. Buyer behavior is being impacted by this new reality. Your customers are looking for you online. Make sure they can find you and make sure they can buy easily with a great experience. You need to think of your online store as another physical retail presence. So, 
what can we expect in the near term? Social distancing, yep, it's here to stay and we need to allow for it. Retail innovation has been accelerated. Our CEO, Toby Lutka, speaks about the world we envisaged in 2030, being pulled forward by eight or nine years. This has changed how buyers interact and expect to surface products and needs. We need to get comfortable with that. The world we have come from is different to the world we move forward to. Example of this include the emergence of 3D models, augmented reality, increased use of buy online, pick up in store, click and collect, reimagining of retail spaces for experience versus just shopping venues. Omnichannel, yes, it's a big word that frightens a lot of people, including me when I started to think about it, but in, to think about it in its simplest terms, Omnichannel retail doesn't require you to be everywhere, just everywhere your customers are, and providing those shoppers with a unified experience across those channels and touch points. So e-commerce implementation, what are the must-haves? Before you do anything, you need to know the, the process for e-commerce content marketing. Firstly, you need to identify your audience. Find out how to reach them online. Survey your customers. When was the last time you actually did this? Do you know where they live on the internet? And then you need to create content and distribute them on those platforms. When you take this approach, everything gets easier. Just remember that every content strategy you apply needs to ultimately drive conversions. Here are some ideas for content marketing. Firstly, identify your audience or become your audience. Find out how to reach them online. Survey your customers. What content elements of your competitors do you find inspirational? Why does our company exist? What problems do you solve? How do you solve them? Why does your customer buy from you? Once you have all these answers, then you can consider thinking about making a website. You'll need a website or storefront. Ideally, your platform allows you to add your own branding, your logo, colors, and images. Side note, great images and compelling copy are crucial for effective selling. Customers should be able to pull from, uh, be able to build orders and pay for them, uh, but also get to know you as a business. Your number one resource is time. The less you can spend on managing your business operations, the more time you can spend on selling your product and connecting with your customers. Your platform should make it easy to create and manage products, manage and fulfill orders, manage payments and shipping, and even content marketing. The ability to re review and track your analytics, how your website is performing, is something that is often overlooked, but being able to gain insights will help you work smarter, move faster, and think bigger. Trusting your platform is something I think most businesses want because we've all heard the horror stories of businesses who've spent tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars a year trying to keep their site secure, or ones losing tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars because their site went down on a crucial sale day like Black Friday. Here are some options for setting up your website. With all that said, you've got multiple options. Custom build your own using a self-hosted solution. You can get a shop built from scratch and total control over almost every aspect of how it looks, feels, and works at a price. Or use a fully hosted solution, there are many options available, not just Shopify, and get the most modern e-commerce features out of the box for a modest monthly charge additional features available through apps or even hiring a developer. The Shopify Advantage. Basically, you can create a website. We have multiple free and paid themes with the ability to brand and customize your store, your own domain name, mobile commerce ready, just in the box, shopping cart included, easy store management, and one mission control. 
it's localized with uh, all different types of payment gateways here right in New Zealand, especially uh, Laybuy, uh, Afterpay, Paymark. There are multiple shipping solutions like uh, New Zealand Post or New Zealand Courier, etc. There are marketing tools like uh, free email marketing and the ability to sell uh, through Facebook or Instagram, as well as analytics tools. It's uh, secure and reliable, unlimited bandwidth. You'll never be charged based on the number of visitors or traffic to your store. Shopify is level one PCI compliant, so you don't need to worry about security of your customer's credit card data. And all Shopify updates are automatic, uh, so you don't have to uh, hire another developer to update when software gets updated. And the other one that I really love as a merchant myself is the 24 seven free customer support. So those are some high level areas to consider as we move through lockdown to a semi reopened economy. And there's a lot to consider there, but I wanna leave you with a specific approach to look into when planning what is realistic for right now versus ongoing. This should allow you to start small and build towards being a well positioned in the future. It's a good, better, best approach. So there are three levels of readiness to work through. Good, better, best. Good is just get started. It doesn't need to be everything. Start small, focus on your top selling products and give your customers options and routes to engage with you on how they want. Heinz did this recently with some core products and launched in less than a week. If you live in a traditional local offline retail world, focus on local delivery, click and collect, buy online, pick up in store. Focus on your existing customers. Take them with you on this journey. They love you. Loyalty and trust are key to move through this. Better, be good, plus elevate your customer experience. Retail experiences often show elevated customer service. Make sure that your team is prepared for an influx of online customer inquiries and have frequently asked questions updated for customers to self-service. If possible, staff can help out remotely with live chat concierge services, um, especially if they are knowledgeable on product assortment, education and uh, outfit building. Options like Instagram Live, Facebook Live or offering one-on-one -on -one online consultation could go a long way. New customers collecting data and try to capture interest of new online shoppers. Many buyers are moving online and will never go back, certainly in the near term, and think about new product launches and market expansion. Best, be better, and but be prepared. Cash flow and financial planning, uh, reduce leverage and debt, get your accounting system into the cloud and make a plan, and develop an omni-channel strategy. Be where your customers are. Here are my top five chilies that I wanna leave you with for creating an online uh, solution. You need to have a clear brand. Make sure you differentiate yourself and are easy to remember. You don't have to have a physical uh, location to bind into someone's memory. Delivery, are your delivery options affordable, competitive and ideally sustainable? Iteration, can you quickly and efficiently get all of your products online or is it better to roll out your core products first build a presence and then upgrade over time. Inventory management, can you maintain inventory integrity across online and physical sales? And demographic, will your online audience remain the same online as your physical presence or will it pivot? Where will you focus your advertising marketing online compared to traditionally? You need to be remarkable, remarkable, plain and simple. This is the time to differentiate like never before. Who do you serve? How do you serve, serve them? And why should consumers care? Shopify has created a free COVID-19 response resource to help businesses navigate through this time, including webinars, courses, product info, marketing advice, and financial advice. It's all available at shopify.co.nz forward slash COVID-19. And I encourage anyone looking for training, support, or to learn about other ways you can come through even more successfully to check it out.
on a local front, I would like to bring your attention to shopifynewzealand.co.nz, a one-stop shop where you can sign up for a free trial on Shopify. You can book one-on-one -on -one appointments with me to help you with your online strategy. Uh, you can have a place, uh, a place where you can register for local events. It's a central hub for all Shopify resources for Kiwis. That's shopifynewzealand.co.nz. It was excellent, Julian. Thank you so much. Sorry, just a little technical difficulty there, getting back um, back on the screen. Um, Julian, there is one question um, that directly relates to this, so I'll just ask it now. Um, there's a few people ask, asking about using Shopify for um, business to business and, and whether that that's a solution. Yeah, yeah, it's a, totally a solution. Uh, there's multiple ways you can uh, play with that. It really depends on the size size of your business. If you're a, uh, a major player and you're, you're doing a, a lot of turnover, I highly recommend our enterprise solution, uh, which has some inbuilt stuff. Uh, but like just at a real basic level, uh, what I've done with my business is added an app that uh, password protects certain pieces of my uh, website, which means only uh, my uh, vendors or my retail retailers that buy from me from a wholesale perspective uh, can log in and buy from and then I just have specific products based for them. That's fantastic so um, hopefully there's a few people that were interested in that so um, if there's any more um, specific questions or any questions at all um, just to remind you to um, go through to slido.com and to um, enter that hashtag e-commerce or one word um, to join in and, and ask some questions. So we've got um, Travis O'Keefe who um, is joining us now, now um, who will be uh, on a panel to, to also answer your questions. So Travis is the um, CEO at Te Whare Huka Huka and Nuku. Um, what hasn't Travis done? You know, when I read his bio, it just is so amazing. He's got more than 30 years experience um, as a, a social and um, and just entrepreneur and business coach, um, specifically around startup businesses. Um, he's won multiple um, awards and in innovation in the healthcare um sector, societal impact, excellence in design and research and development, um, and a New Zealand Supreme Award for Innovation and Entrepreneurial Achievement. Um, Tra uh, Travis is the um, co-founder of Te Whare Huka Huka, um, and in his capacity here, he has coached more than 750 Māori business leaders to advance their commercial and social development objectives. That's an amazing achievement. Um, most recently, Travis has been leading the development of Te Whare Huka Huka's sister company, Nuku Limited, um, which is really interesting. It manages, it manufactures, sorry, a range of um, products in China um, and sells them via e-commerce um, to the United States. Nuku is a business that exists on multiple platforms, um, including Amazon, Instagram, Facebook, Shopify and ClickFunnels. So we are honoured to have Travis here today um, as a man who has truly been there and and, and been there and done that and uh, got the postcard um, to assist you all with any of your questions. So welcome Travis and, and thank you for joining us today. Hey thanks Liz and Julian. Kia ora Travis. Travis I've got a Hello. question for you. Yeah, far away. Uh, what are your five top tips when you're starting, wanting to start out starting a business online? If you're like, if you're an offline business and you just want to get on, um, I think the first thing is to understand that a website is um, not the only thing that you require when you're going online. That's just one part of a system. The other parts are you need a, a way to generate traffic. Traffic is, a, for those that don't know, is a fancy way of saying potential customers to come into your online retail store. And then on the back end, you need a way to communicate with your customers. So they call that, they use a tool called autoresponders, which sends out email marketing. Basically, those are the, the things that you need. So that would be an important part to understand. Um, to, Tip two is, you know, it's still the marketing basics. You need a really good product um, and you need to know your customer avatar really well. 
Uh, the thing I find with the customer avatar is think about where do your customers hang out online. Normally, an easy way to find them is to go into social media groups, such as Facebook groups, where they're all communicating. Um, so that would be the second tip. The third tip would be if you want to generate, get them to come back to your website, then participate. It is social media. Go online, jump into the group that's relevant to your audience. Uh, communicate and add really good solutions um, to the questions that are always popping up there. And then what happens is people will click through on your, you know, your, who you are and follow back to your profile. Ideally, you've, you've um, set up your profile so that it converts the people that come back to your, to you, to into your, your online store. So it would be three. Um, fourth would be, um, it is not a magic bullet. Um, there's no very uh, magic wand that's going to make, make this make you a million dollars, um, but it sh should definitely be um, part of the strategy in the current environment. Um, uh, you know, the first plank I would say in this current strategy is retain your existing customer base. Work really hard to retain that. Second thing I would do is open up more channels. Third thing I'd do is you know you need to understand that cost cutting is not going to save you uh, in this environment that. And innovation and social marketing are going to save you. So that is going online. Hmm. How's that? So is it you? It's pretty good. I think, um, you know, like just to simplify it even further, that the key points there that, um, you know, we could probably all agree with is um, don't go with a random scattergun approach. Have a strategy, build your strategy like you would for any other form of, of marketing or sales and, and really follow through with that with your current customers to start with and to build your customer base as you go on. It's interesting, um, Travis, that you, you mentioned a lot there about the um, social networking connections and how that's a great place to um, both attract and retain customers. We've been asked, however, um, you know, some people have seen businesses um, go under because of um, Facebook comments and, and poor reviews that have been made. Um, the question around it is, is it worth having a social media presence if you don't have your online experience nailed? Uh, so that needs more diagnosis, but um, generally, I think it depends on your strategy. So there are two forms of traffic. Broadly, there's paid traffic and there's organic traffic. Organic means people come to your store over time through things that you do online, such as social media, and the advantage of organic traffic is it's free. Um, whereas paid traffic, that's like a tap. You're paying Facebook or Instagram or some of the other social media uh, properties to send traffic into your store straight away. The advantage with social, um, with paid traffic is you can turn it on straight away and you can get people coming into your store. So with it depends on your strategy, I would say, Focus on one one platform. Um, in this environment, I would say if you're a beginner, then build an audience or community around your brand. You do that by going into groups and and contributing and offering advice. I would say if you've got um, challenges, the market's feeding back to you that your product or service is inferior, then you know you don't hide from that. You answer, you take on board, you acknowledge that that is, has been an issue and thank you for the feedback and we're, we're now have improved that area. Um, and we'd like to, you know, build a relationship with you by offering you a 10% discount for our products and services so you can see and experience our, um, our new improvements. And that way you can convert that customer and turn a bad situation into good. There's a couple of ideas there. Yeah. Absolutely, that's absolutely fantastic. Did you have anything to um, add to that, Julian? Yeah, well, regarding the question in terms of, um, you know, businesses being taken down by by rogue uh, rogue Facebook comments, um, yeah, you have to tread carefully uh, on, on any form of social media when you're public facing. And um, I, w I would definitely, I definitely have a persona um, when I'm commenting as, as my business. I think you need to, um, if you're worried about 
people's comments uh you there are ways you can turn you can turn them off but i, I still think uh being on facebook or being on a platform um is critical to being able to create a community uh, around your brand it's not just about uh hocking off a product it's actually about you know what's the problem what's the problem you solve like uh, how how are you the expert what's your differentiation why why am i even here uh rather than over there and um, and that's the same with you know i guess uh, the the offerings of a, of a retail shop or, or being offline why do i prefer going and getting my shoes from that guy opposed to that guy um it's usually the service or what what else is being offered and i think that's also what what's portrayed on on social media as well but yeah, again, you, you do have to be careful. But um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't avoid it, uh, especially, especially nowadays. Every, everyone's on a platform. Yeah, and I think as well, like just to add my two cents worth, um, you can focus in on a social media network that is. Um, best for your brand. So obviously um, you have Instagram, which is heavily um, focused on on photo and short video. If you're a tax accountant. Um, probably not that many photos that you can sort of share that are engaging, you know, a bit of a calculator one day and a, a pen or something the next. Um, so Facebook might be the the place for you, the, the network for you. Um, so just or think about that. LinkedIn. Or LinkedIn or both or but yeah, but choose choose your channel that matches your brand and how that's it, that's going to work and post regularly um, because that's how your brand gets out there. We did have a, um, a question that sort of follows on from this, which is um, which is very um, topical at the moment. You know, how do we actually gain more visibility um, when we've had to cut our marketing budgets on things like Google AdWords? Um, you talked, Travis, about obviously being able to purchase um, targeted marketing. Um, did you want to just talk about that in terms of how they can, I guess, get the best bang for their marketing buck at the moment for businesses out there? Um, I would look at four different numbers. So using metrics and then the metric, first metric I'd look at is what's the um, lifetime value of your customer. So I'd look at that, find that number out. Second thing I'd look at is when they're in your store, what's the average order value? So you can see how much they're, they're purchasing. Then third thing I'd be looking at when they're in their store is how, how much they're converting and what conversion looks like is that they're adding to cart and then from cart to, to, to uh, check out and check out to dollars in the bank. So I'd look at those. And then, you know, after that, I would be looking at um, uh, what are the cost of my traffic. So I, I would look at those things. And then I would be looking at the first place I look at if you've got an existing website is, is improving the average order value. So if you're selling a product, for example, think about like someone going into a shop and they're going in with their basket and they've bought one of your products at $50 and they put that into the basket and that's their normal checkout. So data tells us that if you can get people to around $75, that you have the additional amount of margin to pay for the profit of uh, traffic to get it into your store. So I would look at it from a, that, that sort of equation, and then then I would run that test and see whether I could my margin would would cover the costs. I'd make a profit. I'd pay for all the uh, cost of goods sold. I'd pay for the cost of uh, my operations, and I'd pay for the traffic. And if I'm still making profit on out of that equation, then I would just be continually putting as much money in th through that machine. So I would do it like that. I would be looking at like maximizing a system um, because if you're getting a return off investment this way then then it's worthwhile in this current environment to keep pouring money in and right now traffic is cheap because everyone's gone off everyone else is, has gone off so that means you know there's a huge amount of inventory online so look, the ad costs are through the um, floor which means it's a great opportunity if you work that the numbers out a good time to give it a go um, we're obviously all quite, sen uh, you know, sensitive at the moment around um, budgets and, and spend that we have. So, Julian, you might have some good news for the people on this um, call today because they're asking, what are the costs a small business owner can expect to incur using Shopify, and um, what what does your pricing structure look like? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so that's a really good question uh, because you know it's a, it's a it's a definitely a valid concern. You know, how much am I paying for this? Uh, so. 
uh, give you give you an idea when I started uh, looking at e-commerce. I paid uh, the, paid someone ten thousand dollars to build a WordPress or just a website uh, for me, and then um, I wanted to change the color of a button, and it would cost me two hundred fifty bucks because it was you know took an hour. Uh, whereas now, uh, the, well, actually, the reason why I, I converted from that uh, $10,000 website to a uh, subscription on Shopify in 2011 was that it was $29 US dollars a month. Uh, and it meant that I could change the color of the button if I wanted to or add, add things to it. Uh, so to answer the question really succinctly, uh, the basic plan is $29. Uh, it comes with everything, including uh, an offline uh, channel with like a, a basic POS. So uh, I don't have my, oh yeah, I've got my phone on me. I could go and have a car boot sale and sell to people using using my phone uh, through my inventory um, and a cash, cash or if I have an FPOS machine. Um, so that's $29 for a basic one, $79 uh, for uh, the advanced Shopify or the Shopify one, uh, which comes with extra staff accounts, better credit card rates and a better POS solution. Uh, and then 299 US dollars for a professional one, uh, which comes with advanced reporting, um, calculated carrier, uh, like freight shipping, um, lower credit card rates, 15 staff accounts, uh, and, a, and yeah, a lot. It's, uh, that's, I finally moved up to that one about a year and a half ago, because I, I needed, I just wanted better analytics, better reporting uh, for my business. But yeah, my, for most of my, uh, for most of my retail, career on Shopify, I've been using the $79 one and been really happy with it. So just to clarify, that's 29 US dollars. Yeah, that's so, all, all in US dollars. So it'd be yeah. about 50 something, 60 bucks 50, right now. Yeah, roughly two, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. either at a $60 investment, which is what, $2 a day to have a presence. Um, but is it, um, you have an offer, don't you, Julian, without sounding a bit salesy, but don't you have an offer where you can, you know, give it a try for? Um, oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah. So free? Shopify has done a couple of things. We've added gift cards to all of our uh, plans. We've also got things like a free Shopify email, so you don't have to use another uh, platform for that. Um, and also, we during COVID, we've uh, realised that people want to maybe give it a go and see if it's actually for their business. We're actually just tied them right through this this time. So uh, Shopify at the moment is giving away a 90 day free trial. Which is excellent. Yeah, there's so, no credit card, card required or anything like that. Yeah. So there we go. You can give it a try for 90 days. Um, a slight change of track now. We've got a question that a few people are interested in. So um, I might aim this one at you, um, Travis, first. Um, it's around how would a New Zealand business manage their omni-channel e-commerce around English and Chinese channels. And English, they're saying, is sort of, you know, Australian, US, um, New Zealand, and then the Chinese, obviously, um, China and, and Singapore, et cetera. Um, so the best way for a New Zealand business to manage their omni-channels across those markets? Outsource it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's the easiest way. If you don't have that capital to do that, you have to do it internally. Um, I I reckon you want to outsource it because when you're going across multiple platforms, you need quite an in-depth amount of knowledge. I think for the average business person, that's probably a massive jump in such a short amount of time because you want to quickly get to ROI as fast as you can. Um, if you're an existing uh, organisation with multi-channels or omni-channels, um, then, or just beginning at that stage, then what I would do is do, it's more advanced, these advanced techniques, where you would take something, a bit of code, it's called a pixel, um, you would inject that code into your Shopify backend store, that code. Um, when people come into your store, they'd click on a button and a cookie would be attached to, the, to them. And then as they go around the internet, that cookie would travel with them. And that's, this is what Facebook does to us. And you could um, set up an advertising campaign that follows wherever they go. So if they're on a um, any other social media property, you can your cookie will tell you that it's they're there, and you can send ads to that 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 social media property. So that would be one approach. Another approach would be um, less techy. Would be to once you've got them in one of your properties, such as email. So if you've captured their email address. 
then create something called a lead magnet. A, a lead magnet is something of value that is relevant to your customer. It solves one of your customer's problems. That might be an ebook or a checklist. It's very simple stuff, but valuable um, in uh, in helping this customer solve the problem. Take that ebook and um, mount it up on, say, uh, Facebook Messenger as uh, Facebook bots or, or Instagram or any other platform that you have. And then use your email to send the traffic by advertising, hey, I've got this free lead magnet, but you've got to go over onto my and uh, join my following on uh, Facebook um, a bots or an Instagram to get it. And you send it out from there. And so you're, you're building the, you know, you're following them around the ecosystem, giving them almost like um, carrots for every um, platform that they're on. And then that's a really easy way to, to build them build out that, that ecosystem and, and then you can go omnidirectional, omnichannel. That's great. And if none of that made sense to you, the Liz's <laughs> simple version is contact a developer and um, and they outsource will know it. exactly what to do with that, which is the original, yeah, outsource it. Um, or, and yeah, Julian. over to Julian to add um, uh, another so option. So Shopify um, has multiple uh, options for you to uh, change change language for your, for your website. So like I'd like to know more about that business that's doing you know English and um, I'm guessing uh, Chinese. Chinese, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so like you could have uh, dual languages going. Um, also, you can like, you got to think about your omni-channel strategy. So like where uh, I, I would I would probably put myself in the firing line right now and say uh, most people that are in China or um, in Singapore are probably not on Facebook, but they're probably on WeChat. And so then how, uh, you know, focus on, on WeChat strategies and getting them to punch down into like a Singaporean or Chinese part of your website. And then, uh, you know, the, the English speaking component um, will probably be on Facebook or Instagram or uh, TikTok or LinkedIn. Uh, and then, you know, do the exact same sort of strategy. Uh, but you can't, you could manage all of that, um, you know, in, in one way. But again, it's a, it's a lot more advanced. So I'd, I'd be getting advice on that. Um, yeah. Excellent. Um, I've got some sort of, you know, quick answer questions uh, coming up. Um, oh, are we good. seeing <laughs> Are we seeing much happen in the recurring subscription space in New Zealand? Do either of you have any intel on that? Julian? Yeah, totally. Uh, it's a great, a great, great option. Great idea. Um, it's definitely. Uh, I don't. I don't have the figures in front of me. I'm just just seeing it. I'm seeing a lot of it, uh, including actually uh, myself from from my business perspective. Like, uh, like Jerry. Like I've got the most expensive. Apart from today, because we've just opened our retail shop. But I've had the one of the most expensive uh, warehouses for the last six weeks in my retail shop. Uh, sitting there, I'm sure a lot of you guys have as well, right? And so during the six weeks, um, uh, I've done a couple of things. I've started running and I've started looking at uh, other ways to uh, pivot my business. And one of them is through the subscription service. So we sell, uh, my business sells uh, special effects makeup and typically people that are hobbyists that are into that will come to my website, will come to my store, get some amazing advice from us uh, and then go away. But we've realized uh, after we surveyed our customers, which just blows my mind how often you should do this, was that a, a huge proportion of them are hobbyists. Uh, go figure, we thought they were all makeup artists, uh, but a lot of them are just, just think that they're hobbyists. And so what we realized is there's a lot more of them out of hobbyists out there. And so we thought, wow, wouldn't a, a subscription service uh, with some learning be nice? And so we, we implemented that uh, about two weeks ago and it's just starting to go game busters. And the great thing is, is that we're, we're targeting in New Zealand, but we're also targeting Australia. And we've got plans to do uh, America as well. And the, 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 it's scalable. And, and, and really easy because like you get your subscriptions and then you can uh, work on how much how much inventory you need um, and require. Uh, the only thing you have to work out is the um, the freight component. But yeah, to answer your question, great idea. If you can do it, do it. Perfect. Um, I know the answer to this, but just very quickly, does Shopify have e-commerce mentors? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Yep. I can say, because I've been schooled, um, there's a wide range of um, help, assistance and education that's offered through your um, sort of education arm. And it's super impressive and it's all online to the, the vendors, isn't it? 
Yeah, well, uh, Travis is actually one of them uh, as well. Uh, uh, Tefati Hoko has just uh, just been announced that they're oh. actually uh, um, a Shopify partner, uh, which is Excellent. which is cool. So you could reach out to Travis. Perfect. That's that's well, there you go. Value in that in its own. So from both of you, I just want one quick tip. Um, we're being asked, you know. Prior to COVID-19, we've got businesses that have been a very traditional um, brick and mortar type establishment. What's your number one tip to encourage a customer base to start shopping online for these traditional stores? I'll give you my tip while the boys are, um, are listening. Incentivize. If you are a new customer, if you are, uh, you know, give them 10% off on their first purchase or um, if you can, um, yeah, a free shipping or something that's of low cost to you that um, would be a value or benefit to them. Julian, Travis, any advice from you? Do you want to go, Julian, or me? You go. Okay, so I would do something, a strategy called offer uh, stacking. Offer stacking means you take your product and you add value to it by coming up with other informational products like um, um, checklists or like a um, knowledge, a, a PDF with, with steps on how to do something. And I, I would put all those things together because there's low cost to, to reproducing those later on. And then you can, what will happen is you can differentiate yourself like having all these additional low cost things in addition to your product. So that way you're not you're not crunching your margin down, you know, you're protecting your margin. So that's that's how I would do it. And I'd offer that out. Excellent. And Julian? I would be uh, taking your customers on a journey with you through it no matter what. Guess what? They're already online and they might be looking at your competitors. So yeah. what I'd be doing is telling them, hey, uh, th these guys love you, like I mentioned before. They're, they're your advocates, they're, they're, your, they're, they're your customers, they buy from you. Uh, they've probably got amazing relationships with you or your staff. Tell them that you're going online um, and um, build, build the, as Travis likes to say, build, build the rocket ship as you fly it. Um, and, and I think they'll, they'll appreciate that, that they'll, they're the early adopters of, of you and your online strategy. And then once you're online, maybe uh, find your top five uh, customers, your top 10 or 100 customers, and make them uh, your micro influencers and uh, get them to sell for you and spread uh, out to a larger larger market. And I guess that sort of ties in here with um, another question that's come in. You know, we're um, traditionally, um, we did just have brick and mortar stores. Um, the flip side to that is um, organisations whose markets were traditionally overseas. How can we get more Kiwis um, buying their their products or engaging? Can you repeat that? Sorry. So um, there's organisations who whose target market was overseas customers. Have you got any advice on how they could pivot to um, target the Kiwi market? Yeah, that's really interesting. I was actually speaking to a souvenir shop uh, yesterday, uh, a, 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 an actual, um, you know, Kiwi Kiwi souvenir shop, uh, and they um, they wanted to go online, which is totally fair enough. Um, but I was like, well, if there aren't any tourists around, how or you can't sell on um, to, to 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 no one that's no one that's not there. So what would you do? And uh, the idea that I came up with was, um, you know, New Zealand pride or, or, or working out some form of, of angle where you can sell sell the product to, to your um, your customers. Uh, maybe connect, um, maybe trade me is also, you know, another another good one. Um, and also uh, just want to shout out to the uh, trade me forums. If any of you guys haven't been on the trade me forums, I highly recommend going on there and just having a look around. If, uh, it's a great pulse of, of New Zealand. Uh, and you'll find uh, little niches and little places to, to go and, and, and uh, learn about your particular market up there. I really, really like um, checking that out. Mm. Liz, do you want one? Sure. I would um, look at whatever your, your profitable product is, the most profitable, and I'd find the complementary products that type of products that are purchased online that are similar. You can see, find that by going to um, things like Trade Me or Amazon and looking at what's frequently purchased. Look, 
I would find the, the person or the company that, that sells those complementary products in this market and I'd do a joint venture. So I'd joint venture and create an offer into the existing customer base. That way you're both winning and you're, you're, you're getting a piece and you're giving them a clip of your commission of your, your profits. But what I would do along that route is I would collect their email um, of anyone that purchases from you. And then now you've just built your, your own database. So I'd be doing a lot of joint venturing in that way. Great idea, yeah. man. Yeah, really great advice there. Um, just a question for you, Travis, um, in regard to um, some of the Māori businesses that you um, are working with or seeing out there, um, what types of businesses are the most successful um, in the e-commerce space or Māori businesses that are doing really well in, in that space? It's interesting, it's quite a, um, diverse. I think those that have built a following on social media are the ones that are doing the best. So a wide range of different industries, um, but they've got this following and they've created this brand presence that their customer base understand who they are, what they stand for, almost like a movement, a community that follows them. And, and those are the organisations that are not just surviving, but they're actually thriving in this market. So I think that that's the key characteristic. It's not an ethnic thing. It's not an industry thing. It's more about their strategy and tactics that they're using. Absolutely. I mean, um, I live in Rotorua, and one of the biggest success stories that we've had come out of Rotorua in terms of uh, online Māori uh, businesses lately is the Pippi Ma dolls that um, speak to you in Te Reo. Now, they had a plan. It wasn't just to create a doll that would speak to you in Te Reo. It was a huge plan that encompassed multiple um, products over multiple platforms, and um, you know they've gone on from success to success. So it's great, excuse me, it's great to see those Māori businesses both, um, you know, out there and and thriving in what they're doing. It's very cool. Um, have either of you seen um, any successful collaboration platforms? We know collaboration is important. Um, but in terms of just going back to that question around partnering with people who may have a, a um, product that's um, you know synergistic to what you're doing, is there anywhere where you would recommend going and, and finding those um, collaborations? Uh, yep. Sorry, uh, Julian. <laughs> yep, yep. So. Um... The easiest way for me uh, to, to do this uh, before uh, the app I'm about to talk about was going on my Instagram or my so all my platforms, uh, social media platforms, and uh, scrolling through people that like me and finding out, you know, who I wanted to collaborate with. Uh, but there is, uh, write this down, everybody. It's spell spelt C A R R O, Caro. Uh, it's an app that you can plug into your Shopify store, and I've heard sooner rather than later uh, it's going to be on other other platforms. But what that does is it goes through your social media platforms, uh, like your Facebook, your Instagram, your email list, and your actual Shopify store, and it finds people that are um, uh, influencers, so people that have, have in New Zealand around five thousand. Uh, followers or more and then what this does for you is it identifies the people that have a have a large following but it also have an engage it also has an engagement indicator so who's engaged with uh you know with their following um a percentage right and then it tells you whether or not they are actually a shopper of yours or if they just like you on your platform and then it gives you the opportunity to collaborate with these influencers and say hey look take a look at my i really like who you are take a look at my shop is there anything in particular you might might want to promote? And uh, you know, can we do a collaboration? And um, I've been testing this out for the last six months in my shop, and it's just blowing me away. Um, a, how many how many people follow us and uh, influencers that actually buy from us just just blew my mind. Even if even just if that was the the case, it would that would be worth it. But then being able to collaborate with them and come up with cool, innovative ways to enhance each other's brands um, is, is just, a, just a huge thing. So, um, and the, the, the kicker here is that it's free. It's a free app. Perfect, so we can have 90 days on Shopify for free and plug in this free app and go gangbusters. Yep, and um, if, that's, if that's it, then that would be, that, yeah. that's, it'd be worth it. 
The other advice just from me is, um, you know, have a look in your own backyard, um, maybe things that you hadn't necessarily thought of um, connecting with. You know, if you own a bakery that is a, a brick and mortar bakery um, and there's a organization that sells party decorations, you know, why not collaborate and have the full party experience with your cake and your decorations? Just have a look out there and just think creatively and a little bit out the box in terms of um, what you can achieve. Um, our next question um, surrounds, obviously there's been change um, to businesses um, and in order to, to get that collaboration from staff to come up with maybe new product or, or service ideas, what would you say is the best way to go about that and, and would you need to incentivise that at all? Just while you're thinking about it, I'll give you my two cents worth. Um, I've just worked with an organisation um, lately and they called in all their staff. They were a tourism operation here in Aotearoa um, that were having to close their doors. Um, and they went to the staff and said, we're going to have to make you redundant. Um, but as part of the consultation, does anyone have any ideas? Um, well, the ideas that came in, I'm actually really pleased to say that that particular operation is opening today with implementing some of these ideas. The staff wanted to get involved, the staff wanted to keep their jobs, they wanted to keep getting paid, and that was all the incentive that all the incentivization that they needed. Would the two of you have anything? Any other tips or comments around that? Um yeah, I, I can contribute five cents. Um, I personally, I wouldn't pivot just yet unless you really have to. Again, I, I retain my existing customer base, get on the phone, talk to them, have empathy. Second thing I'd do is be opening up channels. So, you know, like I'd be looking around all the channels. There's lots online as well. And then digital, but then pivoting into creating a, a new product or service if you really have to. Um, because and the reason why is because it's new and it's going to suck up a lot of your resources in this current environment. So you've got to be sure that that's the right thing to do. That's the last bullet I'd fire. But if you were to do that, I mean, I'm a big fan of using data. There's a whole we, – we use data analytics to decide which products we, we manufacture. We An easy way to do that, a simplest way to do it, rather than going into technical details, is you can go online. They have those Facebook groups. Um, uh, you know, we have in, in, in our Māori space called Tōtoko. There's other ones made in New Zealand, things like that. I would go in there, I would go down the list, I would have a look at which um, posts that are selling those products have got the most engagement. Engagement and a way to look at, uh, you know, another way to just define and describe engagement means the number of likes it's had, the number of comments it's had, the number of shares that it has. I would add all those up and those that had more, you know, a high amount of those, that's likely that people really like that product and are probably a market for it. So I would look there and then I'd, I'd you know, do a joint venture or, or um, you know, and run an affiliate off it. Or if you are a fast, fast follower, then and you can do a patent uh, search, then you copy and improve, you know, 20% on it um, and then take that to market. Excellent. I would, I would I would consult with my staff because they are, um, you know, they know your business nearly as, as well as you do, uh, and um, hopefully, hopefully, are as passionate uh, or into it as much as you are, and they know your customers and probably um, some sometimes might even um, service them more than you do. So consulting with them would be really important uh, to come up with uh, critical ideas or uh, if you if you need to pivot. Uh, and I think you'd be surprised, just just like the guys in Rotorua were. Um, I think, think that yeah, consult, consulting with them, you could um, incentivize it by doing uh, some sort of uh, deal. You know, hey, look, if this if this idea pans out, we'll give you a, a percentage of profit. But uh, I'd be very cautious around that because uh, it could just eat up a, a fair amount of profit if it if it does pan out. But hey, if it saves jobs and and the business, then why not? That's it. Well, um, unfortunately, we're coming up to the end of our time. Oh, sorry, there was one other question. Someone saying they were concerned about cybersecurity um, and how do they sort of get help and advice around this. Um, EMA have some excellent e-learning on um, cybersecurity and passwords that might be worth checking out. Um, and um, otherwise, yeah, speak to an advisor around that. Look, lots of really great questions today coming from you all, and I, I 
thank um, both Julian and Travis for um, your time today and answering these questions, and also to um, to you out there for attending um, for attending this webinar. Um, lots of really key information and points. Um, my little um, thought to leave you with is um, fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. Give it a go. Give it a try. We're being given lots of help, information, support, special offers at the moment to go out there and, um, you know, give this a go. But also don't go in with a scattergun approach. Try and have consistency around your um, digital transformation process or your digital strategy um, moving forwards. Thank you so much for watching today. This recording will be available on um, the EMA's dedicated COVID-19 website, covid19.ema.co.nz. Take care. All the best. Thanks again to Julian and Travis. And um, ka kite to all of you out there. Thank you.